Mark, brilliant to be back at Mazak here in Worcester again at your European headquarters. Now, we're looking at a machine today, the CV5500, which we did look at when it was first launched. Today, it's got the addition of automation, and we're going to talk about that. But we're also going to talk about what you were quite right to say a couple of years ago, that this was going to be a huge success for Mazak. Yeah. Now, a lot of that has come down to the fact that you designed it based on customer feedback. Yeah. Could you maybe tell us about how that works? Yeah, well, the, the voice of the customer is really important for us, and it helps us to do a number of things. But with this particular model, price and specification are key, and also the application. So we look very closely at what our customer need, and we think we've been able to come out with a very much a winning design. And it's proven to be, hasn't it? Because you've got a lot of these installed now, made here in the UK. Um, might be a common misconception, but some people think that everything that is is made by Mazak comes out of Japan, but that's really not the case, is it? No, it's not the case. And um, we not only manufacture machines here, but we also do the market research and we design our own machines here as well. And they're very much designed for the European market and our European customers. So what was it people wanted, which, what you've done with this machine in order to make it a success? And you talk about performance and affordability. How have you targeted both those areas? Start with the performance. Yeah, well, the, the CV5 really, is, um, is a machine that ticks a lot of boxes, especially for the market that it was aimed at. One of them is it's affordable. So customers have been able to move from vertical machining centers into five axes. And that's really been, we've identified a number of customers that have had vertical machining centers, had a number of processes, but wanted to reduce the number of parts in process and to do it all in, in one operation on a five axis. So that's been really key. The other factor is a number of customers are working with very tight spaces, so the CV5 is designed, it's very compact. It's able to be located um, in, in the customer's premises. We've got a front coolant tank and a side chip conveyor. So the access and the maintenance is very good to the machine, but also some really key features, accessibility for the operator, and also the ability to adapt it to automation. And those parts were right at the forefront of the design. Okay, now often when you try to make a machine, a performance machine, which clearly this is, it comes at a price tag. So how have you made it more affordable to those that thought they couldn't get in to the Mazak, um, you know, to buy a Mazak machine before? Yeah, well, first of all, I'd like to assure our customers that the CV5 is made without any compromise. So it uses uh, fully ground ball screws. They're directly coupled to, us, uh, to the servo motors. We use a fully cast product. Um, we use the same quality of spindle and spindle bearings. And of course, the, the, the um, world-class smooth XCNC. So what we've actually done is looked at our manufacturing process and the way we offer this with a series of options and we've tailored it very easy for our customers to be able to choose modular option choices which enables us to make it um, very efficiently and deliver the right price for our customers. Um, Mark, the, I mean affordability is, is one thing as you've said and there's no compromise so I want to touch on a couple of the reasons that make this machine able to continually hold tolerance, um, you know, be reliable and, and deliver a quality part. And some of those things come down to the spindles capability, um, you know, the way you stack the axes on these machines. Yeah. Could you maybe start with the spindle and, and the cooling element to keep the machine yeah. from growing? On the CV5, we have two spindles. We have the 12,000 RPM and the model that you see in front of us here is 18,000. With both models, they come with the circulated cooling around the spindle. So as a machine is using different RPM, different speeds, the customer has the assurance that the cooling around the spindle will control the machine thermally. This machine with 18,000 RPM also includes a standard coolant through the ball screws. And again, looking at the fees and speeds that customers use today, especially with the advent of high efficiency milling and truck oiler milling and dynamic milling, that's very key to us because short, um, very fast movements in the machine tend to increase the heat. What this machine has got is a series of features that negate any thermal rises in temperature. So what does that ultimately give the, the user then? What can they achieve better with the fact that you've got those elements on the machine? Well, they can machine the parts with confidence to achieve accuracy. And it's very interesting when you look at five axis because it's very difficult to, to vertical machining center. With vertical machining centers, really, um, you machine in one face, and if the machine moves, you can just apply an offset to bring it down. With four five axis machine, as you turn the table, any errors on one side are duplicated on the second side. 
So accuracy is key, even for an entry-level machine like the CV5. Okay, now you mentioned at the start this about access as well, and you mentioned how you'd really paid attention to that. It sounds an obvious answer, but I still want to explore it. What difference does that make to a user, the fact that you've ergonomically designed this to be you know, um, very easy to access? Well, we did a lot of uh, discussions with our customers, trying to find out their requirements. And a lot of customers were saying to us they wanted good access at the front of the machine to be able to set it, to be able to view the operation. But at the same time, um, they wanted to have good access for automation. So the CV5 was designed with side automation. And what we've also done with that, we've made a number of standard packages on the machine that it's very easy to automate. So on the prices, the customer just had to simply tick the box for automation. Even if they're not using it, they can future-proof themselves with automation by choosing the package and then someday later applying the automation. Now the automation is key to that and I'm going to come on to that in a, in a second. Before I finish the access um, area, you've got one door on this machine, haven't yeah. you? As opposed to two. Some people say opening two doors is, is not as good as just having one because you can use your hand for something else. That's one area I picked up from. But also for swore fall away, what's the, what, how does that all work? Well the door was very simple actually Paul. We spoke to a number of operators and said Often when they go to the machine, they've got a tool in their hand, they've got a workpiece or material, and so to be able to open the door, they need one hand free. So that was really, really quite straightforward. And sounds simple, but it's what our customers wanted. But with, with the machine as well, um, we've designed it that due to automation, that the chips are taken away. That's a very important feature. You, you don't want to leave your machine running unmanned and then find, finding you've got problems with swarf piling up. So. The, the accessibility of the machine is key, but also in way in which it evacuates a swarm from the machine is also equally important. Um, now, let's, let's touch on this automation here because you, you have designed this, and, and quite rightly so with what the market demands this day, to be able to fed, be fed for the unmanned run. So this automation, is this going to be attractive then to companies and why? Why would they opt to add this to their machine, Mark? Well, what it does is increase their, their available hours. That's a key thing. A lot of people have looked at automation initially and thought, well, I don't have the quantity of components. I'm running small batch quantities and it's perhaps going to be difficult to automate. But what we've done here is to look at the way in which customers typically buying this machine would automate their components. Um, the, the system we see here, the MA2400, is ideally suited to those, again, beginning with automation. For various reasons, one, you can program it and set it up in just five minutes. So you can change over between workpieces very easy. The second is that a CNC operator without the knowledge of robot programming can program everything through a parametric series of questions and answers in, in just a matter of seconds using the graphic interface on the CNC. And there'd be another advantage to me that you free up, you, you free up your operators, don't you, by implementing automation like this? Well, that's true, actually. I mean, we've done studies that show that 70% of the time the operator is doing repetitive tasks and only 30% of the time they're doing the creative things like setting new parts and programming. So what we've got really here is a system that will free up the operator. He can now spend more time doing the creative tasks and leave the machine to do the repetitive tasks such as the part loading. Now we talk a lot about robots and, and cobots and the safety element but I think it's important to, to bring out in this feature as well the fact that there is obviously access to it but it is still safe in the workshop. Yes, you can see that we've got a series of a mechanical fence around the machine, but there's a wide opening that provides easy access. And that access is protected by a light curtain. curtain. So if the operator does inadvertently enter that in operation, then the machine is safe. Um, lastly, Mark, your control system here. We always hear from your users about how easy it is to use, how powerful it is, um, and how it seems to advance continuously, yeah. doesn't it? What is now available on this machine? Well, the CV5500 is equipped with a SmoothX control, which offers a staggering performance of 540 meters block processing speed. So with five axis machining, and today's where we're using dynamic milling, data is thrown very fast at the machine, it's micro segment programs, high capacity programs, and this control has the ability to cope with it all. It's, um, it's a dual system. We have two types of programming language, we have Mazatrol, the conversational language, and we also have uh, G-codes and ISO. So if a customer wants to program directly on the machine, he's got the tools to do it with Mazatrol, but equally if they're programming offline, 
then we have a, a full G code system that enable them to do it with, with, with offline programming. And the performance of the control, what, do, what impact does that have on the finished part? What will be better about the component as a result of your software? Well, three key things really. The cycle time, because the processing speed in five axis is, is really fast on the machine. That's a very important factor. Uh, perhaps it's an unseen thing that the number of times that machine will accelerate and deaccelerate, it's necessary to have the, the speed from the, from the CNC. The second thing is the accuracy, and finally, the, uh, the quality of the surface finish. We do that with a function called smooth machining configuration. And that really works very similar to the way in which um, modern cars work, where you can control the way in which the gearbox works with either a sport mode, an eco mode, or normal driving. So for example, if you're doing roughing work and you want the machine to accelerate fast, we can set it so that the machine accelerates through the roughing fast, gives the optimal cycle time. But then when it comes to finishing and accuracy, we can do a number of things. We can increase the accuracy of the machine, or we can increase the surface quality. And that's done through a very easy uh, touchscreen setting using sliders. It's really a piece of cake. It sounds very much like you, you have got this right with the design of this machine, Mark. I want to close this now by you picking out four or five points which, which have made you get this right. What would you think your customers say about what you are delivering them now with this CV5500? Well, the combination of performance and the price is, is very important. So our customers have been able to buy a machine that's been able to transition them from three axis work to five axis at a price that they can afford. Also, the specification has meant, has meant that they've seen a, um, an increase in their productivity. The build quality of the machine has enabled them to have reliability, so they're assured that the machine can, can, can deliver all of the time. And also the, the various design aspects of the machine. So for example, it's a compact, compact layout, it's able to go in even the smallest of factories. Um, the CNC control is very easy for new users, but there's also a degree of sophistication for advanced users to be able to eke out those higher level of specification performance required for today's manufacturing.